Lynn, how are you today? I'm good. How are you, Rory? Really good. Such a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure uh, like if I'll ever get a more perfect opportunity to ask you this question. What is your favorite scary movie of all time? The Shining. I mean, <laughs> I mean I, that, it's just a hands down whenever I think because of all the films I've seen, I'll never, ever, ever forget Jack Nicholson in that movie. And there was something so eerie because it, it wasn't just scary. And I think that's an important element. You know, there's jump scares and there's something is, you know, but there's something that penetrates you that to a point where I, that was just I. I I thought about that film for, for weeks and weeks after I saw it, and it still is a scare. He is so scary in that movie to me. There's some lovely stories around, lovely is maybe not the, the right word, but there are some spooky stories around uh, some famous horror movies and how the sets themselves have had like creepy goings on. Yep. And considering you're, you are considered one of our now modern great screen queens and you've got some fantastic horror movies on your CV. Have you ever experienced or been told about anything spooky or creepy that happened while making a horror movie? I have. I once filmed, I can't even remember the name of the film right now, um, but we filmed in an old mental institution. And <laughs> really, there you have it. <laughs> you just told the rest of the story. <laughs> I have nothing further to add. <laughs> I mean... It's partly, listen, it's partly our imaginations because we are creative people. And so, you know, you give us a couple little sentences and we take it in a little too, sometimes too deeply into our hearts. But um, that was creepy. And I swear to you, I mean, everybody, and again, it was whatever we were manifesting from our own experiences, just being in this in this environment, or whether there really was, but there's stuff with rooms hearing doors slam, you know, and I mean, there was that stuff. You know, and you go, well, who's down there? And it was empty. We would walk down there and there was nobody there. And that is when you go, I go, really? It's, I don't want to talk about this anymore. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> so your answer is yes. <laughs> yeah. I, the second you said uh, the location, I was like, oh, cops, not. I'm like, really? I'm, <laughs> I'm gone. Well, it was really bad. And there were old bathtubs that had never really been cleaned. It was, it's a horrible place. It's here in, um, I can't remember, it's outside L.A., but um, I, I think it's since been closed down. <laughs> it's <laughs> probably for the best, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And look, I was I was doing I was looking at your again your impressive CV, and again this opportunity it feels very serendipitous because next week or the week after it is the twenty five year anniversary of There's Something About Mary, oh, which is why did shocking. You? That is shocking. So, I, 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 for when it came out, and I remember so clearly seeing that. Do you have any particular standout memories now? Quarter, quarter of a century on, really. Uh, for some people's like favorite comedy of all time. I mean, all of it. I because I that's such a story about. Um, they didn't want to see me for the role, and I I had met the Fairleys when I did Kingpin, which was the first movie I did for them. And when I read they were doing this, I I. I asked them if I could audition for, you know, for Magda. And they said, you know, you're not right for it. It was another, they did that to me twice. <laughs> and I had to convince them. I mean, I, I begged them to just, you know, to let, let me come in and read for them and stuff. And then they did cast me. And um, she's just a, it's just a wonderful person. I mean, there's something, we just saw it again. It was, I think was in honor of this anniversary coming up. So we saw it in the theater just a few weeks ago and it totally holds up. It's one of the funniest movies ever. I mean, that scene with Ben Stiller and Puffy, uh, you can't, there's no way. Nobody, the physical comedy that he displays in that film and, and all of them and Matt Dillon, I mean, they, and Cameron is just a, like a beacon. I mean, she's she is so beautiful in that movie. It, she just she lights you up watching her. So I think it's it, it's a timeless film. I think it, in fifty years it'll still be as wonderful as it is today. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Lynn, thank you so much for your time today. Oh, I appreciate it so much. I wish we could talk forever. <laughs> uh, listen yeah. again I, uh, for hours, but the only topic we can't talk about is that one particular movie. That, that's that's off the table now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> Something is following us. I'm going to need you to remain still. Hello?
Tony and Sinclair, how are you doing today? Good. Good, how are you? I'm really good. Such a pleasure to talk to you both. We're going to kick off with a difficult but cliched question. Um, what is your favorite scary movie of all time? I'm going to have to go with The Conjuring 1. I think that was like one of the only horror movies that has legitimately scared me. So, yeah. It's very spooky. Mm. I think for me, it's probably It. Mm. which is more just, I remember how old I was, I remember where I was, I remember how I felt. There's a scene in this, and it's it's kind of close to starting, I don't want to spoil anything for anyone, but it, it reminded me so much of that now legendary jump scare from the first Insidious, where something just suddenly appears. And I was telling Patrick that when that scene began, I had a full drink in my hand, and when that scene ended, I no longer had a full <laughs> drink in my hand. <laughs> But also on the on the flip side of it, as as good as the editing and, and the and the score is and and all that, you have to have what I am now calling really good jump scare acting, because if the reaction to the jump scare isn't good, then you're kind of taken out of it. So first of all, congratulations to you both because the jump scare acting in this is tremendous. But do you have any tips maybe for anyone who hasn't done a horror yet? Where where do you go to when you're getting into the jump scare scene? I think personally, uh, because it's it's very it's a hard thing to just try and actually make yourself scared versus when you're being sad or angry, it's easier to kind of do that. With with this, it's I feel like it's really just about committing it to, to it, throwing all of your insecurities and, and how stupid you think you look out the window, and just fully commit to screaming as loud as you can and and, and looking as, as scared as you can, falling on your ass or like whatever it is. But on top of that, I really think it's the buildup. That, that makes it what it is. Is that safe for you, Sinclair? Oh yeah, you said it. I think that you just have to <laughs> kind of throw yourself into it. There's no other way because if not, it doesn't look real. Mm. And then somebody will probably come walk from behind the camera and tell you. Yeah. So <laughs> the sooner that you can commit, the sooner you can move on to mm. the next scene. For Patrick, like you can tell he is He's such a fan of horror anyway, because obviously he's got so much of it in the CV, but just, just talking to him about the genre, you get the feeling that he he doesn't look down on it the way some people might look down on it. Like it is like horror people people love going to the cinema to see mm. scary movies. But when he was or when both of you were chatting to him about this, were there any particular outside of Insidious, were there any particular touchstones, I guess, that he mentioned? when it came to either your characters or some of the scenes in this? Well, I'll say he referenced a lot of movies and I, I wish I had seen them all, but mm -hmm. you know, he, he walked us through what they were. One thing that he did talk to me a little bit about, um, he said that horror movies are not so different from musical theater, which I thought was an interesting comparison because you just kind of have to be big and loud and you're not really, ashamed or self-conscious about the sound coming out of your mouth and it has to be a little heightened um, sometimes a little ridiculous is how it might feel and that really helped me I, I I come from a theater background and so I was like oh okay we'll just go a little more and that'll actually read pretty well right yeah yeah I mean I, I know he talked a lot about just kind of cinematography wise and and, and tone wise just James Wan in general I know he really wanted to try and bring that aspect to it um but then yeah a lot of like the the i'm gonna call it like overacting in a way of just like really that was a little more tough for me to do sometimes just because film acting is so because you can get really close to a person so it's very kind of like defined like what you have to be very specific with your choices of what you're doing with your face versus mm -hmm. theater is, is a lot more kind of in your body and your voice yeah. and, and it can be a lot bigger I think the three of us need to pitch that to Patrick next. His next project should be a musical theater horror. Yeah, yeah. So yes. get Insidious get on Broadway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Ty Sinclair, thank you so much for your time today. Thank, thank you. you. The further you travel, the riskier the journey becomes.